Hey guys, welcome to my Let's Play of Sonic 3 and Knuckles Complete, the ROM hack. I finally decided to just call it that. And we have finally entered Sandopolis Zone. Ugh. I like Sandopolis Zone. I do. But it's a case of liking something that absolutely wants to hurt you every time. It's, it's me and Sandopolis Zone have a very, very abusive relationship. I love Sandopolis Zone. I love the theming. I love the way the zone looks. I love how everything moves with the heat waves. I like the gimmicks of jumping up the freaking sand waterfalls, if you want to call them that. I love Sandopolis Zone. It's just all very fun. But it is such a pain in my ass. Oh, sweet God. I have never before, with the exception of maybe... Maybe Death Egg Zone <laughs> had so much of a love hate relate not love hate relationship had so much of an issue with a level. <laughs> Carnival Night Zone is an issue because I just can't stare at it for a long time, and it's kind of boring. All things aside, Sandopolis Zone <sighs> the first act is fine. Yeah. Aside from the fact that it's a little slow in areas, with if you hit the uh, repelling gimmick, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Move ahead to Act 2, however, and you're introduced to, well, an entirely different gimmick, and it's kind of a bigger stick in the butt, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So, I'll explain a little bit more about it when we get there. But Act 2 is just not fun. <laughs> it's... Oh, God. It's just, it's a maze with a kill gimmick. And it's just... I've had better times getting lost in cornfields. Corn mazes. Maze mazes. I've had much more... I've had a much better time getting lost in them. But, as you can see, we have gotten two of the remaining three super emeralds and if we just press on we will find the third well at least i hope we find the third or did we only find one we find all three in this level i know that but i'm pretty sure that was the second one we came to wasn't it might not have been i might just be stupid i'm feeling a little stupid could be wrong though Hmm. I guess we'll see. I'm pretty sure we got two. Maybe it's only one. I think it was only one. Yeah, it is only one. Why did I think it was two? I guess because I've seen that stage like twice. Ugh. I'm recording these back to back, so it's kind of... Some of them just blur together. Haha. <laughs> Well, I'm not recording all of them back to back, but I'm recording sessions of them back to back. But I do love Sandopolis Zone. It, it, the, the first act's very fun. The bosses are pretty interesting, too. Well, the Act 2 boss is interesting, the Act 1 boss is. It's something. <laughs> it, it's definitely something. <laughs> The Act 2 boss is fun. The Act 1 boss is definitely something. And the Act 1 is more fun. And the Act 2 is kind of a pain in my ass. It's, it's, it's all very, very interesting. To me. Probably not to you. To you, I probably just sound like a rambling idiot. I admit, I am. But you're watching a rambling idiot, so... Who's really having life decision issues? I don't know. It's 7 in the morning. Almost pushing 8. And I've been up all night. Oof. Sleep is for the weak. And so is underwear. Or was it pants? I'm pretty sure it's pants. Pants are for squares. Just like math. Math is for squares. Math is also for circles and spheres and landing rockets on the moon. 
You know, that's another game I've considered playing on YouTube is Kerbal Space Program. I'm not that great at it, but I do tend to make my crashes pretty big. So, it might be fun to see. I don't know. It all depends on who would be interested in watching me crash a bunch of really, really insanely large things into the planet. Probably more people than I'm thinking, but... I mean, I don't think that often. That's what got me in this mess in the first place. And with that, we are six Super Emeralds in. Oh, we are almost done. We're going to have all seven Super Emeralds, and then we can turn into Gay Pride Sonic. And we gotta continue. And it went bling. And it's blue. And I think the last one we have to get is the silver one. You know, the Chaos Emeralds have never stayed a consistent color. Some of them have, not all. <laughs> like, sometimes there's two blues, sometimes there's only one. Sometimes there's a dead me. Wow. Sometimes there's no silver one. I think there was a pink one once. There's always a red one, there's always a blue one, there's always a green one. I don't think there's always an orange one, though. They've changed a few colors over the years. They've also changed a number, too. They've gone from... 6, to 7, to 8, to I think 16 in Sonic the Fighters. 8 time stones. Yeah, the Chaos Emeralds, they're... they're uh, there's another thing. What is with the gimmick of 7? Like, I, I get that it's heavily influenced by DBZ, but they're not the only one to use a gimmick of 7. Nothing comes to mind right now, but I've seen gimmicks of 7 before. At least... I feel like that's something... If I haven't seen gimmicks of 7 before, then I feel like that's something that is literally so... I feel like that's something that would be common, I guess is what I'm getting at. Why does that feel right? Like, it's seven and groups of five. And it, uh, five, six, and seven are the usual numbers for sacred or magical items. And occasionally book series. But, I mean, uh, shit, the five elements from Avatar that you could bend. Well, thank goodness, there's like 30 elements in Avatar that you can bend. But when I think five, I think the four main ones and then bending the energies. And if you want to go with anything that's a grouping of six, you can have six Pokeballs on your trainer belt. You can have six Yu-Gi-Oh cards in your hand. There were six Chaos Emeralds originally. If you want to go with groups of seven, the Dragon Balls, the Chaos Emeralds. I feel like there's something I'm forgetting. The Namekian Dragon Balls, the Super Dragon Balls, those count, right? I feel like there's something I'm forgetting, but... Like, seriously. Something else famous that uses a lot, that uses seven in its sacred items. But I can't. For some reason, I want to say the seven sacred swords, but that doesn't sound right. Unless. The seven seas? I just thought of that. Yeah. The sacred holy seas to fishermen. To, it's, it's a seven, it counts. Because I said so, and this is my list and my bitchy complaining rant that doesn't make any sense. And is completely trivial and probably not even true, but I'm complaining, damn it, so... Yeah. Uh... The Seven World Rings, that's a Sonic thing. The Seven Soul Emerald, that's a Sonic thing. But, you know, I... Okay. I get... The Soul Emeralds to a point... Because it's in alternate dimensions from 
Sonic's dimension, so it, 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 seven Chaos Emeralds, seven Soul Emeralds. That, I, I get that. that. That one makes at least a little sense by the theory of how we all perceive different dimensions to be, okay? That one I understand, but like the seven world rings that made Sonic go Dark Spine Sonic in um, the uh, Sonic and the Secret Rings. God, why did I... Ugh, that game was so terrible, but... Yeah, um, why did it have to be seven? Like, I get you wanted to make it like the Chaos Emeralds of the series, but... You guys have done different things before, I mean, shit. <laughs> Let's just forget eight Chaos Emeralds, six Chaos Emeralds. I'm pretty sure 16 Chaos Emeralds was in there somewhere. Pretty sure. And then in the comics, they have uh, the black Chaos Emerald. I'm pretty sure is a thing. And uh, there's a lot of different things that they've done with the Chaos Emeralds. So why do you just have to stick it at seven? It doesn't necessarily just have to be seven. Honestly, it'd be kind of interesting if we had a Sonic game that had the Chaos Emeralds in it, but they were not the focus of the story. And if you wanted to do Sacred Item, you could do something else. Like, I mean, and not so much like, you know, the Sonic Adventure series, but more just in terms of it would be like the Five World Rings, but you could collect the Chaos Emeralds to go Super Sonic as a side thing. You know, but they still have the Dark Spine Sonic fight. But we come to the hardest boss in the entire game. You hit him once, and he goes down. But uh, I can't afford to hit him, because if I do, I'm going to take damage. So I'll do it once. And see, he's down. But if you get close to him, he reforms himself. So what the fuck are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to kill him? I mean, he's just jumping at us. Do we just keep backing up? I don't know, Tails, what do you think? Do we stare at him? Our supervision's not working. Heat vision. Should we call for Superman? I mean, Goku? I mean, shit, I'll take Iron Man at this point. Just anyone. Or, hey, I wonder if he'll jump in the quicksand, like Tails. Hey, you did, like Tails. Bye, Tails. <laughs> oh, that was funny. When I first did that in game while I was recording, I, I laughed really hard. I actually paused the game and had to cut it there in case you didn't notice. Because I was laughing, I couldn't focus. And I died a few times as a result. But, so we've reached Sandopolis Act, Zone Act 2, and I'm going to mention that little gimmick that I was talking about earlier. So, you saw how we entered and everything was dark, and then we pulled the switch, and suddenly a light came on? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the gimmick, but it's not the only part of the gimmick. See, the light's used for something. That something? Ghosts. As you'll see here in a brief second. We just popped a capsule. And a bunch of ghosts flew out. And now there's one at the top of the screen. We pull the lever switch and he goes away. But. Over time. He'll come back. And then. It'll get darker. And he'll bring a friend. And then it'll get darker. And he'll bring a third friend. And then after a brief moment. They start attacking you. And they will just keep attacking you until you activate the light again, making them go away. It's a fairly straightforward gimmick, but the problem with it is, or the problem I have with it is, a lot of the light switches are kind of spaced out. And another gimmick that they have in here is a sand chamber gimmick, where if you pop a cork, and wow, that was a lot of rings, but if you pop a cork, right a bunch of sand will start coming out and it'll flood the room and you're supposed to use this to navigate higher and higher into the stage if you do this 
or try doing this while there are ghosts spawned at the top of the screen. It, it for me personally, it uh, caused me many issues. Many, many issues. And combining the two gimmicks together makes for great gameplay challenge, but also a very large pain in your uh, rectum area. And wow, I actually forgot we got 230 rings. But you want to see you you want to see hypersonic? You want to see hypersonic? I know you want to see hypersonic. You want to see hypersonic? You're gonna have to wait. I don't feel like I don't, I don't feel like it right now. I actually got those rings so I could get lives, not necessarily to go hypersonic. Believe it or not, in this playthrough, I actually really did try to restrain myself from using hypersonic too much, because normally when I play these games, the instant I get supersonic, I will literally just run through the levels as supersonic, or hypersonic, for fun. I don't know. I've developed a weird sensibility of, I have used to be a really big, uh, you know, Game Shark, Game Genie, cheat codes. I used to use cheat codes a lot. I used to play Grand Theft Auto strictly for cheats. But somewhere along the line, I developed a... I got bored, I guess, is a way to put it. I got bored real quick of just, you know, basically being able to run through a game without any challenge to it whatsoever. So, I actually grew to have a distaste for cheating. It's kind of weird, because, you know, you think, by the way, two ghosts now, and look, it's dark. Because, but you would think, you know, cheat's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be an infinite t uh, free time. You, you can do whatever. Yeah. But if there's no challenge, then what's the point in playing? If, I guess, you know. I'm sure there are a lot of people who think that way. And I'm not some special snowflake, but. I guess when I compare it to uh, the, my best friend, he is um, very much a person who does not like having extreme challenge and a lot of people don't and I don't understand why like if, if there's no challenge to the game what's the point in playing but I don't know maybe that's just me because <clears throat> I've always been the odd one out oh yeah but this is the uh, sand chamber section that I was talking about I died a lot here I went through a lot trying to record this for you people. The emotional trauma I suffered. The emotional trauma I suffered. Donate to my Patreon. I don't even have a Patreon. <laughs> I don't even have a Patreon. Don't worry. Not 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 that type of e-beggar yet. Not yet. Don't have plans to be. But yeah. <laughs> I suffered emotional trauma for you people. Donate to my Patreon. Ugh. It's like a fucking machine gun. This is the fastest one in the game. Fastest lever door, by the way. By the way, pushing these levers a lot it becomes more of a chore than a fun gameplay gimmick. Like, time doors are fun, but they're used in a little bit excess in this level. Really hampers any speedrunning you might want to do. Also, you can only get two extra lives from collecting 100 rings. I did not know that. Because, as we see, I got 300, but I still have three lives. I should have four. If you knew that, congratulations. I didn't. I'm sorry. And I missed those two rings. Damn it. Yawn. Although, thankfully, we're nearing the end of the level. And we're going to challenge one of the more interesting boss fights in the game. And one I kind of enjoy. Like, a lot. Should have gone up, scrub. Should have gone up. supposed to go up I just use the peel out that works too no 
Go up, scrub. Not that kind of up. Yeah, go over there. The, see that platform? Yeah, go there. There you go. God. I'm such a moron. Well, I didn't see that. Must have gone the other way. 390. I don't remember how I made it to 400. Tails, carry me, damn it. There we go. Did I make it to 400? I might have. I don't think so. No, I did not. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm gonna cheese this boss fight, man! Oh. I guess it doesn't work like that. Damn it! So, when I first played through this, I hadn't played this in a little bit, so I was... This is actually my first attempt at this level, but I haven't played through this in a little bit, so I had forgotten that you're supposed to try to hit the top part to make his armor flow away. I thought it just happened after a bit. But, as you'll see, when I got, uh, pushed near the, I got, when I got pushed to the, uh, edge of the screen, I started to figure stuff out. Because, as you'll see in a minute, I run over, and he basically corners me against a wall. So I have to start playing smart, or I have to start being really aggressive with trying to take him out. Because as we'll see in a minute, we're quickly running out of room. <laughs> like, fast. So I decided it's time to do or die. And I mean, invincibility frames abuse, it's a great thing to use, especially if you're terrible. Also, having tail is... I have a having tail. Having tails can be really useful because he does tend to get, even if he, uh, even if he can screw you, he can occasionally get some really, really nice hits off that you couldn't get normally. So it'll help double up your damage. It's not often, but it does happen, like it just did, as you saw. But I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next episode where we tackle lava reef.